remember the good old childhood days when you would just power up your microcomputer and it would start up right into basic and you could program away. Imagine if someone made a computer with modern components that did the same. Well, if you haven't been living under a rock for the last decade or so, you know that during this time of retro revival, there are several projects that achieve that goal. Amongst them, the Commander X-16 that is in development currently still. There are things like the Mini Pad, which is the recreation of the original Commodore Pad systems with more modern components. There is the Gigatron computer and things like that that you can build as a kid. And there also is the series of Maximite computers that have seen several incarnations, including the original Maximite, which was a monochrome output computer running on a PIC microchip at its core. And that saw several updates leading up to the Color Maximite 2, which is the most recent one which has like true color, 65,000 colors and all kinds of quirks added to it. And you can still build that yourself from the files that are openly available. I'm going to link everything in the description. There are a number of good videos about that one. It got released roughly a year ago. And now we see the next incarnation of that, which is a deluxe version building on the Color Maximite 2 and it's called the Color Maxima 2 Deluxe. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, I'm actually one of the YouTubers that got chosen to test this and I got this, I got contacted by Piotr from Poland, one of the people who developed this, the Deluxe version and, oh, there's a lot in here. There's quite some expansion cards for this. Yeah, these are small expansion cards. This is a presentation unit. <laughs> this is the fully fleshed out version, which comes with Wi-Fi and a USB chip for a mouse controller. Oh, and he even included a micro SD card. And this must be the main unit, actually. Yeah, there it is. Wow, this is very, this is very well packaged. Um, yeah, you are going to be able to buy these fully assembled. Yeah, here it is, the main unit in all its glory. Nice uh, plastic project box and it has a screen printed cover on here. Color Maximite 2 Generation 2 Deluxe Edition. So this is the uh, the peak of Maximite that is available at the moment. Yeah, the features that it has in common are the same processor, it's an ARM core and the same port here that's also available on the Maximite. It has VGA output, this has an extra header here that you can connect more things to. It comes with a USB port for power. You can also power this one by 12 volt power. Interesting, okay. Audio output, nice. Power switch. And on the front, we have an infrared sensor, which is also an added feature. We have a port for SD card. This also comes with the DB9 joystick, standard Atari joystick port, which is pretty nice. This also has dedicated USB connectors for keyboard and mouse. Some of the earlier Maximite incarnations had PS2 connectors, but USB, of course, is the more modern standard for keyboards and mice. And Piotr also included the Color Maximite 2 Generation 2 Standard Edition, which is this one. To compare, this has only one of the ports here and it only has USB power. Has the USB for keyboard and mouse on the back side. VGA connector like the other one. And yeah, it also has an infrared sensor, so that seems to be standard. Ha, and obviously these none ports are for Nintendo Nunchuck controllers that were first introduced with the Nintendo Wii. The base model supports two of these and the deluxe version has three Nunchuck controller ports on here. These are running on ARM Cortex-M7 chips which run at over 400 megahertz, so they are plenty powerful enough to program games that are actually running very well. We are going to see about that. 
Yeah, I guess this wouldn't be a good electronics channel if we weren't to take a look inside before we even try to power these up. The files to make your own Color Maxima 2 base version are actually openly available, so you can just order the PCBs, order the components, the parts lists are all open and this basically is pretty easy to make. It uses the ARM board that is sold separately, which is the processor board that just plugs into some headers on the board. The deluxe version is an upgraded version of the base model with the added functionality that I pointed out earlier that Piotr makes and sells from his website. I'm going to put all the links in the video description as usual in case you're interested to getting one of these. Um, yeah, let's take a look inside. These are designed to be assembled uh, by yourself, like DIY projects, so they're pretty easy to work with. Oh, <laughs> this is the presentation unit. Yeah, so here's what it is. The uh, original one has the development arm board plugged into some headers. This is all integrated nicely into an SMD version of the board. There's still some sticker residue. Pretty neat design. This part on the back is actually pin compatible with the Raspberry Pi headers, so you can use... I guess you can use some of the Pi heads available with this and program them in BASIC, which is pretty nice. Also has a little buffering battery in there, of course. And pretty compact. I mean, yeah, it's... it's uh, Roughly the size of my hand, and my hand is like a, a standard size human hand, I guess. <laughs> so it's pretty tiny, but it's really powerful still. And upon closer inspection, I realized that these uh, front and back parts are actually circuit boards as well. So the files for these are also available. You can make these covers yourself and have all the labeling on there. Let's take a look into the deluxe version. Four screws for this one. This is basically the same style of case, just bigger form factor. And this has expansion slots in it, which some of these cards that Piotr also provided fit in, which add all kinds of extra I.O. that we can tinker with. I'm probably not going to tinker with it in this video. Yeah, this is basically the same board and they are supposedly fully compatible with the original version. So this part of the board basically is the same design and these are added uh, expansion slots that you can plug all kinds of expansions into and make your own pros possibly. Let's remove this presentation unit sticker, shall we? I mean, it's my unit now, I can do whatever I want to it, basically. <laughs> yeah, all the ports have been nicely integrated on here. And we have these jumpers to set the different COM ports, I think. This has little brass inserts for the screws, so this is uh, an even better version of the case. So I'm just going to hook this up to a USB phone charger should be enough to power this and I'm going to plug in a monitor and I'm also going to plug in a keyboard which it should work with a standard USB keyboard. But first, let me take a couple of seconds to thank the sponsor for this video, PCBWay, who are my favorite manufacturer of prototype PCBs of all kinds. They make extremely high quality PCBs from your Gerber files and they have very fast turnaround times and delivery is quick as well. The service is very good. I highly recommend checking out PCB Way. The link is in the video description if you are interested. Let's return to the Color Maximite. USB keyboard. There we go. Let's try and power this on. Yeah, Maximite, 480 megahertz color Maximite 2 generation 2. And as I said, it has uh, MM2 basic built in right from the start. Keyboard works. Yeah, this feels kind of like the old days when you would just power up, hook something up and power it on and you would just go right into the operating system. That is pretty cool so far. 
Yeah, and these are the original inventors of the Maximite project. Geoff Graham and Peter Mather are the original inventors of the project. And Piotr made the deluxe version that we are looking at at the moment. Yeah, I tinkered with the Maximite for a couple of days actually and figured some of the basic dialect out and did my own little bits of programming on it and it is great fun. And also I realized that this video is not going to cover everything that this thing can do, especially the deluxe version. It can do so much more and yeah, there's a lot of possibilities with the added uh, expansion headers that are on the board and things like that. I'm just going to show you some of the things it can do. If you are interested, I put links in the video description with everything like the manuals and the special abilities that this thing has so you can read up on it yourself. I'm probably going to do another video on this at some point because yeah, it's, it's great fun. It just takes me back to the days when you would fire up your computer and just program away. This fills that gap that didn't really exist. You had like uh, modern programming languages and emulators and things like that. And yeah, for people who don't have retro computers, I would highly recommend getting one of these. Or if you just want to learn programming, this is amazing. This speaks a dialect of GW basic with some added commands for the special abilities that this has. And it's pretty easy to work with. You push the F1 key and you get into this file browser where you can just select the things you want to run. And I made this little program, it's just a little uh, tinkering thing that just prints Jan Beta was here in a large font repeatedly in different colors. You can always stop the program by pushing Ctrl C you can list it as you would with your old machines and that's my program there. And you can also go into the editor, which is pretty nifty. Uh, so this has the whole coding environment just built in, which is nice. The commands may look familiar if you tinkered with GW Basic on your PC back in the day or maybe today even. CLS cleans the screen, font selects a font. There are several fonts in various sizes built in and you can also upscale the fonts so you can uh, make them bigger with the second number there. Then we have a do loop and I randomize the RGB values for the color. Then I set the color to the RGB values I randomly chose and print my little line there. And then I put a little pause, because if we remove this pause, it runs hilariously fast. So you can just run this from here. That's how, how fast the processor is. Uh, so yeah, not quite what we are used to from back in the day. But it's just amazing what you can do. There are several commands that are optimized for like game development and things like that in this basic dialect. And yeah, but it, I'm by no means a professional programmer or any good at programming at all, but it's great fun. And uh, I spent some time with the manual, which is really cool. And there's also a dedicated programming manual for this thing that also has some nice tips and tricks. Yeah, it's just been incredible fun tinkering with this thing. And uh, of course, I won't go into that, but you can use the GPIO headers on this to uh, control all kinds of things that are outside of the box, <laughs> literally. So it's, it's an amazing platform to code and to tinker with and to try things and to interface with the world. This also has um, Wi-Fi built in. There are several demos and games that are coded on this machine that I want to show you. Let's get into that. And I'm sorry, I'm just filming the screen he here. Uh, I didn't find any good way of capturing the output. I need to get some kind of VGA capturing device at some point, but yeah, for now this is going to have to do. So there's simple uh, test programs like this Bubbles demo, which just shows up 
the 480 megahertz processor, <laughs> kind of. This is all done with a uh, little dedicated commands for, yeah, like very simple program with the circle command and with the randomized colors there. This is as simple as it gets and this is so fast that you can actually code demos and things in basic. This can also play back mp3s and uh, also Amiga mod files, which are music files. This can show some picture formats, which is pretty nifty. So here's a very colorful demo. And it also outputs sound, as you can hear in the background. <laughs> This is just emulating old-style chips. And this is all coded in BASIC, believe it or not. It's just running so fast. Yeah, look at that. You can look at the whole code here. It's just pretty amazing what you can do. And this is not compiled basic, mind you, this is like interpreted on the fly, so that's how fast this is compared to our old machines. Just kind of amazing. One thing I particularly liked <laughs> is uh, this Napoleon commander. It's the clone of the good old Norton commander, as you can see. <laughs> this is pretty cool. We have a terminal program, you can of course connect this to your network and just BBS away and things like that. And there's some amazing things to show off the machine, like this clone of Wolfenstein. <laughs> it's not fully implemented yet, but you can see this is a basic program, so yeah, it's kind of cool. It's a bit slowish, but still, running this in basic is kind of a dream. <laughs> and as you can see, yeah, it's a basic program. A pretty sophisticated one, that's what it is. So, here's another fun one. It's pretty sophisticated. It is a version of the classic Gauntlet. Complete with music, title screen. This is one by Mauro Xavier. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. I don't know where he's from. But uh, yeah, he does some really amazing work by recreating some arcade classics for the color maximite. And this looks beautiful. Also fully music Welcome. and samples. I'm gonna be Merlin, wizard. the wizard. And this is just, this is a pretty neat version of Gauntlet which plays amazingly well and it's pretty fast. As you can see, we got uh, full screen scrolling and basically all the features from the original game. Oh, I can walk through walls there. <laughs> That's a bit of a bug. Yeah, this is still in development. But yeah. This is blazingly fast, and uh, if you think about the fact that it's a basic program that's interpreted on the fly, it's pretty impressive. Made the first level, yay! Yeah, and Moro is also working on some other conversions and things like that for other things. Uh, there is a final fight that is in the works, but I couldn't get that to run. Yeah, and as you can see, this is all done in BASIC. Pages and pages and pages of BASIC, but you could, in theory, just go in there and change stuff, and it's pretty obvious 
uh, how this works actually. So yeah, pretty neat. <laughs> Let's try the joystick test because the deluxe version of course has one of my favorite features, a dedicated DB9 old school Atari compatible joystick port. So let's connect a joystick and see what that can do. Just connecting a joystick. And this is just connected through to some of the um, GPIO pins, I think. So it's reading those. Let's start the joystick test program. And there's no output on the screen until I move the joystick. Oh, right, right is misspelled there. Fire, right, left, up, down. Yeah. So that works beautifully. And as you can see, it's very easy to set up. So you control the GPI opens by the set pin and pin commands. So you're pulling up all these pins and once they are pulled low, which is what is done in the joysticks, then you can read the direction from the pin variable. So yeah. They added a little pause, of course, because it's so blazingly fast that uh, otherwise you would get strange readings. Yeah, that's how simple you can implement a joystick port. And of course, you can build an adapter yourself with the original Color Maximal 2 to just uh, connect it to the GPIO pins. We could modify the gauntlet, for example, to read the joystick in no time, basically. This is really easy to do. So, amazing feature. Another nifty feature is the dedicated mouse USB port. And let's fire up the mouse test. And yeah, as you would expect, we have our mouse fully implemented here. That's a pretty easy thing to do as well. It has these dedicated controller mouse commands. That's cool. Yeah, and this also has the infrared sensor here, which you can control by using standard, I think, Sony and something else uh, remote controls. I don't have any nunchucks or classic controllers to show you this feature, but I assume it works as beautiful as the mouse and joystick inputs. Yeah, to sum up, this is a really nifty thing and it's great fun to tinker with this. Actually, it feels, for me personally, it feels like Back in the day when I got a new computer and was figuring it out and was figuring out the basic that it had and things like that, just really, really managed to take me back to those days and that's worth it alone. It's not even that expensive. You can buy it from uh, this deluxe version from PS Labs. As I said, the regular version even is an open source project so you can technically build your own. The links are all going to be in the video description. If you feel like tinkering with one of these, I highly recommend trying one of these out. Yeah, and if you have an old CRT, VGA CRT or want to buy one, I think they, they are not that expensive still. You could, of course, hook that up to one of those and take the nostalgia to a whole different level even further. <laughs> to sum it up, I really like it. I couldn't cover everything it can do in this video, obviously, because it can do so much. And yeah, the sky is the limit. You can do so much with the uh, external things. Several cards exist for the deluxe version that I haven't even tried yet. If you have fun tinkering with old systems, you are going to love this new system, I think. So yeah, that's it for today. Hope you enjoy it and hope you enjoy the Maxima 2. Thanks for watching. Thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon or on the channel memberships page or elsewhere. Hope to see you again on this channel. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.